Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to use Torden to get rid of all of these tree re sprouts around Bigfoot. A couple of years ago, I cleared this area to allow light to get back to this big old massive oak back here. I'm restoring oak savanna if you haven't seen any of the previous videos. And what happens when you cut a lot of trees down is they re-sprout. So today I got to get in here and cut these out and put tordon on the cut end. You got to put the tordon on pretty quick otherwise it'll like scab over and it won't have any effect. If you're new to the channel the big old oak there is called Bigfoot because it has a massive buttress on the back side. I'll show you that real quick. There she is. Look at the size of that buttress. So it kind of looks like a foot, so I call it Bigfoot. And it is a massive tree. Hey, there's a cat. That's Maisie. Maisie climbing Bigfoot. She's showing off. She hasn't been on film in a while. So back to the project. I cleared this entire area that spring. I think that was two years ago. And I cut out, like you could see a stump right there. There was just tons of little trees in here and a good amount of big ones. You could see a big one right there, a big birch. I cut them down, and then since then, a bunch of them have been re-sprouting. And some of these are just growing on their own. That's probably a re-sprout right there. So I got to get in here with the big pruning shears and hack these out like this one. Where's the stump? There's the stump right there and some mushrooms. I have to get right near the stump, cut all this stuff out, and try to get tordon on all the little ends. That'll kill the roots and that won't come back. After a while, this will naturalize and I'll only have to get rid of trees every once in a great while or burn and that'll get rid of the trees. Are you coming down, kitty? She's not going to come down. All right. I believe I'll be playing with this dog the entire time as well. So let me go get the tordon and the big old shears and get at this. I have to do the same back here, but to a lesser extent. But that area is just a mess, so I'm going to take care of that today. I'll do this some other time. I still have all the stuff in here from yesterday. Yesterday was a very long day. If you've seen the video, I did a uh, hack and squirt back here where I'm going right now. Oh, what else did I do? Oh, I sprayed the generic tenacity over there. I seeded over there, there, and there. Filled in the ruts over there, and I moved four wheelbarrows of gravel to the side of the shed. That was a long day. Today will be a bit shorter and I gotta get this stuff put away. All right, so here is my Torden RTU. RTU stands for ready to use. I always try to shake stuff up if it's been sitting on the shelf. This is probably a year old. It comes with a handy little dispenser here. You just lift it up just like dish soap. So that's all I need, the Torden RTU and my big old shears here. And I'm going to bring a rag. This gets a little messy after a while, and I like to keep it wiped off. So I'm going to grab this stuff and let's get over there. All right, I have my stuff ready to go here. I think I'm going to start by going down into here. If you're new to the channel, there is a road back there that we put in last year that is going to curve up and then go up to the main road up there and then there's going to be a road from right behind this temporary shelter here 
just a small little gravel road that's going to go straight across this over to the pasture over there. These are going to be mostly for Natalie for trail riding, but we're going to have a shop here at some time right in this area here. So I want to have the ability to come out of the shop and up to the road so I can drive down, go through the shop, and go out the other way. All right, let's get these tordenized. We have a special case right here. This is a white oak and it's a baby from the tree that we're trying to save. And all we're going to do with that is just cut it off at the base. And if it comes back, cut it off again. If you use something like Torden to uh, kill the roots on that, it's likely to be root grafted to the main tree and you may sicken or even kill the main tree. So if you're using Torden to restore an oak savanna, make sure you don't put it on any little stumps or anything that are the same type of tree that you're trying to save. It may kill it. All right, I'm doing all these tiny little ones as well. This is taking a very long time, but that's to be expected. Before I forget, this right here is Side Oats Grandma. As I've been doing this, I've been finding, well, this is Little Blue Stem. This is Virginia Rye, I believe. There's a ton of the grasses that I planted here 
but by just looking at it, it really looks like it's all perennial rye, which is the nurse grass in here. Once I get done with these re-sprouts, I'm gonna go along and show you some of the native grasses that are growing in here. It is just about noon and I got the vast majority of the stuff over here. I got down under the tree a little bit past the ball, up this way, and a lot of the stuff under this black oak. I'm going to go have lunch and when I return I'm going to bring with me uh, just a handsaw and I'm going to get rid of the lower branches on this black oak here. A little bit later this year, or possibly next year, I'm going to take out all of these dead trees around it. And that's going to look really, really nice at that time. This whole area is going to look just gorgeous once it's done. Alright, when I get back from lunch, the branches are gone. It's early October and this is one of the best times to prune an oak tree. I don't know if this already has oak wilt or if this is just dying back for the year. It would be a total shame if this did have oak wilt because it would probably infect that big white oak there as well. I don't think it does though because they usually lose their leaves early in the year and this is fall. I think this is just fall dieback. All right, so now I'm gonna work my way that way and I'll probably end up down there. All right, that's gonna wrap it up. I got pretty much every sucker that was growing in here, got it cut off, and I put tordon on the tiny little stump, much like this. A lot of the times there's dozens of tiny little stumps like this one, but sometimes, and you've probably seen it in the video, there's only two or three that are fairly good size. Those are real easy to do. As I mentioned earlier, as I was kneeling down to cut these little stumps, I was noticing all kinds of prairie grass. I obviously planted prairie grass here, but like the second year, early in the year, I couldn't find any. I couldn't find any growing anywhere in here. I had planted the nurse grass. This is the nurse grass right here. 
which is perennial rye, and there's perennial rye growing everywhere, but there's also prairie grasses growing everywhere. Like right here. This is a little blue stem. This is a little blue stem. So are both of those. I'm not sure what this is, but I'm going to guess it's a prairie grass. Little blue stem here. This looks like big blue stem. Got a wider leaf and the seed head remains enclosed until it gets way up there. There's some big blue stem down there. I'll show it to you in a minute. So I'm going to wander around and I'll show you what's growing here. I mean, the little blue stem is everywhere. This is little blue stem. All of the leaves in here that are a little bit wider are little blue stem. That real fine stuff is the perennial rye. All right, let's take a walk around and identify some stuff. This is yellow foxtail, in case you didn't know. This I have to get rid of next year, but I'm going to make a plan for this area and do a completely different video on that, so I'm not even going to touch on that right now. This is all over the place. This is either Canada rye or Virginia rye. I'm not sure which. Did you see that? It was, there was spiders all over it and they started running down my hand. That was kind of gross. Note to self, don't touch the rye. All right, a clump of blue stem here, and that might be one plant right there, and that might be another one. These get very big, so they're going to take over and kill out the stuff around them. There's my cat. She went to take a nap. She was with us earlier. All right. Kitty, let's go find some grass. What? Let's go find some grass, Kitty. When we had this area assessed early last year, the DNR expert said not to worry about planting a nurse grass like this, that the, that the prairie grasses were going to grow just fine. And it appears as though that's true. I mean, here's more little blue stem. That's little blue stem down there. Must be laying down. That's little blue stem. And if you look closely, you can see it all over the place. Let's go see what that wide bladed stuff is up here. That's hard to tell, but I think that's probably smooth brome, which is not a native grass, I don't think. Some of these will have to go. There's Timothy grass in here as well, and some of the other pasture grasses. Eventually, I'll get those killed back. Ah. Honey, I, I'm showing YouTube grass. Kitty cat. Come on up here where I can pet you. All right, I got to get this cat off my shoulder. There you go, big girl. All right, I'm going to continue showing these people, okay? All right, there is some very blue, little blue stem right there. That's the little blue stem right there. Yeah, so it's all over the place. This stuff that's encroaching from the pasture is pasture grass. Here is the Timothy. At least I believe this is Timothy. The clump of it right there. 
and right next to it we have little blue stem and I believe all of that is growing out of one plant. And that's the cat again. Let's go show him some more big kitty. She's standing on my foot so I can't leave. At least that's what she thinks. Little blue stem, little blue stem, little blue stem. There's way more of it right here, kind of under the tree. That's little blue stem. This is a little blue stem. And then we got the the rise. I think that's Canada. It's either Canada rye or Virginia rye. I really need to look that up. I have three different kinds of rye planted. This is big blue stem. Much wider leaves and you don't get to see the seed head until it gets really tall and then all of a sudden it looks like a turkey claw. Here's another clump of the Timothy. I really should get rid of that. I don't think it's invasive but it's definitely not it's definitely not a native. All right I thought I saw some bottle brush grass over this way. We'll take a look for it. Another big blue stem. Yeah, the way the DNR expert had explained things, this perennial rye is fairly short-lived. So at some point, these native grasses are just going to take over. I'll have to continue to seed them, but the ones that are already here are going to expand. And sooner or later, it should be mostly or all native grasses like that. More big blue stem. This looks like bottle brush grass. We got rye here, rye there, and little blue stem over there. Got a big variety right here. And we can see big blue stem over there. So this has a lot of prairie grasses growing. A little bit later in the year, I'm going to be collecting seed from the garden prairie, and I'm going to distribute that throughout here. So that should help out as well. One last thing, I did spot some Indian grass in here and I haven't seen it yet. I'll take a look for that and try to show it to you before we leave. All right, I can't find that Indian grass for the life of me. When I was cutting these suckers down, I ran across it and I tried to take some seeds off of it, but they weren't ready yet. I thought it was right there, but I must be mistaken. All right, the next thing that's gonna happen in here is, I'm not sure if it's gonna be tomorrow or the day after, but I have a lot of broadleaf stuff growing in here that I'm gonna knock down. Some of it will be really small trees, but the rest of it will be like that common mullein and grapevines and brambles, all that other nasty stuff. I'm going to go through here and spray 2,4-D with fertilizer, weed and feed, and that should help the grasses for the winter. And next year, we should have tons of prairie grass in here. I mean, look at this. It's everywhere. This is a whole stand of little blue stem right here. Pretty awesome. So if you want to see that stuff, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.